Well, welcome everyone. It's really good to see you all and welcome to our Unity of Las Cruces virtual Sunday service celebration where God is good all the time and all are welcome, safe and loved. And it, it just occurred to me this, this morning that we're joining here. I can see everyone's faces. And in, when we used to be in the CSL sanctuary, we were a small little nucleus of people and meeting sort of in physical state as well as heart to heart and mind to mind. But now we're beaming in from wherever we live and we're at this expanded nucleus of consciousness coming together and it feels really good. So welcome. And whether you're a newcomer or a regular Unity viewer, um, please know that you can join us in many different ways. You can find us virtually at unityoflascruces.org on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. You can send your email address to unityoflascruces at gmail.com so that we can send you the weekly information updates. And you can find our contact information on the slide that Ken will post at the end of the service. So there are many ways to find us and keep connected. And now for a few words of gratitude and good news. Thanks. Thanks to all of our volunteers and donors and helpers and Thank you to all the speakers. Um, we have new speakers that will be new to you coming up in the next few months. Um, some old friends returning to speak in the next few months. And thanks to all of our singers and musicians, all of those of you who are playing, our prayer chaplaincy with Kay Brilliant and our social media outreach with Jane Ray and the board of Unity Las Cruces and all of the energetic support that we're receiving. So thanks for all of that. Thank you for the prayers and affirmations and visualizations. And it really does make a difference in raising the vibration and consciousness of our group of the whole of Las Cruces and flowing out into the world. Helps with our healing of the universe. <clears throat> so thank you for answering the call to be on this call this morning. And we'll be back in the CSL sanctuary whenever it is safe to do so. But now we have some good news with a smile and I'm going to invite Ken back. And I think he's going to transport us to, to my homeland for the good news. All right. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Hope everyone's doing well. I thought I'd share this little good bit of good news. This is from the www.goodnewsnetwork.org. And you can go in down at the bottom left-hand corner, there's a link to where I got this information from. But just wanna show you that some innovative people, um, there was a big smiley face posted on the Houses of Parliament um, in London earlier, actually late last week, just a few days ago. And it was put up there and it was right across the street from a hospital right across from the House of Parliament uh, called St. Thomas's Hospital, mm -hmm. and it was put up there by a, a, a cosmetics company who wanted to put a little smiley face out in the world because it's so difficult to see smiling faces anymore because you just don't see them because of the masks that everyone's wearing. It just to show everyone out there that a smiles do exist and people are out there sharing them wherever they can. And this was just a really neat thing that they set up that everyone could see who was able to visually see it. But I just want to share that to you that people out there in the world are doing strange and wonderful things. And we're glad to see that we can report on some of that. All right, Helen, back to you. Thank you, Ken. And St. Thomas's Hospital is a very old hospital where its patients have seen many, many challenges over the last, uh, over the last hundred years and more. So it's beautiful to see that smiley face. And I kind of would like to see a smiley face on all of the government buildings. That would be a really good energy, I think. So thank you, Ken, for today's good news. And now let's prepare for the opening prayer. So I invite everyone just to settle into wherever you are sitting or standing, wherever you are at this moment. And just focus on the breathing, just settling into your inner landscape. And in this inner landscape, knowing that we are centered in divine love, allowing that divine love to flow out 
the divine love of healing, of wholeness, and allowing and visualizing, seeing and sensing this flowing out to the community of Unity Las Cusas, all of the people here, and whatever the prayers, whatever the needs, whatever the healing, seeing those prayers answered, of course, before the prayer is even spoken. But seeing this healing, loving energy going all out to all of the people in Unity Las Cusas, flowing out and including all of the New Thought community of, of Las Cusas. And just becoming aware that this consciousness as we pray ripples out across America, across the world and into the universe. So we're focusing on that loving, divine love, compassion, healing and wholeness. And knowing that whatever the appearance of the external environment, the divine love is law, is constant, is God in action. And this divine love of God is with us, in us, through us and as us, in every moment of every day. And for this we give thanks and so it is. Amen. And now I'd like to invite Steve Gaskell, doer of good, to share with us the daily word and affirmation. Happy Sunday. We have a happy Sunday, July the 19th, 2020. Our topic today is togetherness. Biblical reading today comes from Acts chapter 2, verse 44. All who believe were together and had all things in common. Our affirmation today is I share God's love, peace, and joy. While I treasure my times of quiet and solitude, I also look forward to enjoying the company of family, friends, and members of my faith community. Whether we're working, volunteering, praying, or simply enjoying one another's company, our shared experiences allow me to support people I care about and feel supported in return. I enjoy and value togetherness throughout every season of my human journey. During times of trial, hardship, or grief, being in the company of friends and family helps comfort me and keep me strong. Likewise, during times of celebration, being in the company of others multiplies my joy. In times of togetherness, may the love, peace, comfort, and joy of God bless us all. In our affirmation together, I share God's love, peace, and joy. And so it is. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for sharing that daily word with us. Next, we have uh, Unity Las Cruces, our affirmation, and today will be the foundation statement with Reverend Tanya. Our foundation statement. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good, omnipotence. Thank you, Tanya. And now it gives me great joy. This is the time where I get to introduce our very own James Hampton. Are you free? Would you like more freedom? That is the goal of our speaker today. When he retired from a career in business, he became a licensed massage therapist and healer. He and his wife, Jan, moved to Las Cruces about two years ago. He has given many sermons in Unitarian Universalist and in New Thought churches. He has served on several church boards and currently is on the board of Unity of Las Cruces. Now he is retired, he freely and generously gives of his time and talents. 
please help me welcome James Hampton. Thank you for that introduction and uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Without you, I'm just a guy talking to myself. So thank you for being here. There was an article in the Science of Mind magazine in April, the Science and Spirituality section, that describes a new way of learning called Bell. Let's try it here today. Periodically, I'll ring a bell. When I do, just close your eyes and relax. Let your mind wander. After a minute, I'll ring the bell again to call you back. Whatever comes up for you during that time will be what's valuable for you. My message today is titled Freedom. I find that the really big capital words such as freedom, love, peace, etc., can be used somewhat interchangeably. Gerald Jampolsky wrote a book entitled Love is Letting Go of Fear. I suggest that freedom is also letting go of fear. So while our goal is more freedom, we'll spend a lot of time exploring fear. What is fear? Most of you have heard it's F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. You see a rope in the dark, think snake, and jump to avoid it. Since all of outside is a reflection of what's inside, even a snake is false evidence appearing real. Fear is the reptilian brain defending itself. It says, I don't want change and I don't want to die. For the dictionary, fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous likely to cause pain or threat. <clears throat> Except for falling and sudden loud noises, our fears are learned. We're all familiar with change your thinking, change your life. Where do our thoughts come from? I suggest they come from our beliefs. Jesus said, as you believe, so shall it be done unto you. So maybe change your beliefs, change your life. And where do our beliefs come from? They come from our parents and our society. A baby elephant is tied to a stake in the ground and learns not to try to escape. The mature elephant is tied to the same stake, a stake he could easily pull up, but he doesn't try. Our childhood shapes us in the same way. We learn most of our fears. We learn most of the ways we give up our freedom. If we learn fears, surely we can unlearn them and free ourselves. Myrtle Fillmore had a belief in illness and had tuberculosis. She learned a new belief, a belief in wholeness. She healed the tuberculosis. I suspect some of you are thinking, What's all this talk about fear? I don't have many fears. Good for you. How about worries? Worry is just fear dressed up in a business suit. Also, it's possible fear is hiding in your subconscious and you're unaware of it. It's time to explore some fears and what we might do to let go of them. My suggestion for how you let go of a fear is just that. A suggestion. I know that I don't know, but perhaps I can spark something in you that takes you to your inner knowing. Let's start with the big fears. We fear death. To help let go of the fear, we can make our preparations, such as a will, organ donation, and a living will. Then we simply accept that death of the physical body is inevitable and decide we will experience death consciously. We begin now to release all resentments, to forgive others and ourselves, to expect nothing from the world. And we courageously decide to experience death 
with curiosity. Many of us believe we are an eternal spirit and death is just dropping the body and entering a new state of freedom. This belief can be very comforting. It's still a good idea to make our preparations. Woody Allen said, I'm not afraid of death. I just don't want to be there when it happens. I'm suggesting that we experience every part of life, and that certainly includes our transition. Some sources suggest that perhaps subconsciously, our biggest fear is the fear of God. We fear God because we're under the illusion that we separated from God, and surely God will punish us for that. The illusion is our ego run amok. And if ego is running the show, the fear can seem very real. Illusion is the key word. It is our illusion of separation, and we cause ourselves any suffering that occurs. God does not punish us. Hopefully, we've all outgrown the idea of a punishing God. If not, or if we know others who have not, can we agree to just laugh at the idea of a punishing God? Also, let's make awakening from the illusion of separation a goal. Other fears that are common to most of us are fear of lack, fear of abandonment, and fear of what others think of us. There's a Zen story of a monk who builds a very nice raft to cross a river then continues his journey carrying the heavy raft on his back. Is fear of lack causing you to carry an unnecessary burden? Where is fear of abandonment restricting your freedom? There's a saying that what you think of me is none of my business. I prefer each opinion of me counts but none too much. Let me give you an example of fear limiting freedom. If you told your spouse, significant other, or someone close to you, every thought that comes into your mind, that could be liberating. But we're concerned about upsetting the other or their reaction, and so we hold back some things. It's let your mind wander time. Close your eyes and relax. I'll use the bell to call you back in a minute. Let's continue to explore how we might deal with fear. We can use prayer, meditation, denials and affirmations, spiritual readings. I'm not spending time on these today because they are the fundamentals of our faith belief and most all of you use them. It can be powerful when we face fears together. I miss call and response as part of our worship service. Let's try it. Fear, stop messing up my life. It's your turn, say it with me. Fear, stop messing up my life. Again with gusto. Fear, stop messing up my life. When we're in the grip of fear, our brain gets stuck in what I call loop. 
or circular thinking, and we cannot think or function to move forward. I've experienced this and seen it in others many times. I can't quit my job because my family is relying on me, but I hate my job and want to quit. But I can't quit my job because my family is relying on me, but I hate my job. See the loop? Fear prevents clear thinking. It's amazing how help from someone not stuck in the loop can so easily free us from the loop and restore our ability to think. So we ask for help. A friend says, find another job before you quit this one. Good advice, but I don't have to take that advice. I just need to get out of the fear loop and then I'm free to think clearly again. Have you ever been stuck in loop thinking? I suggest a major way our beliefs change is to be exposed to new beliefs and observe how they work in the lives of those who hold them. For example, I believe I'm responsible for my daughter and she does drugs and drinks too much. I try to change her to control her behavior. It doesn't work and I'm upset. I go to Al-Anon and am exposed to the belief that my serenity is not dependent on what my daughter does. It's an inside job. One tool that is helpful in overcoming fear is a life review where we recall fears we faced. Usually, most of the things we were fearful or worried about never happened. For example, when I was a boy, I believed I would never learn to drive because my stepfather wouldn't teach me. I often pictured being forced to live in a large city and use public transportation. It was a silly worry. What did you worry about when you were young? Maybe all worries are silly. For fears we're not aware of, our subconscious fears, we can try giving our fear a voice. Fear, what do you want me to know? We intentionally confront fear instead of letting it be behind the curtain, running the show. We know that everything is energy and that includes fear. Since fear is energy, we can transform it. For example, if I have a fear of public speaking and I recognize it as just energy, I can focus on changing the energy so I'm more energized, more excited, more up when I speak. When dealing with fear, stop doing this. Do this. A Course in Miracles says, if I defend myself, I am attacked. And in my defenselessness, my safety lies. Could that be true? If I stop defending, will attack stop? It doesn't seem logical, but my experience is, yes, it works but it takes effort to change the lifetime habit of defending. Another tool is awareness of our thoughts as creators of self-fulfilling prophecies. Job in the Bible said, for the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me and that which I was afraid of has befallen me. Since I mentioned the Bible, Let's digress slightly. What is the Bible to you? Perhaps it's true from cover to cover. Perhaps it holds no meaning at all. Perhaps it's a collection of myths and stories 
that help shape our collective consciousness. Perhaps it's an energy vortex that deeply affects us, whether our mind understands what we read or not. Perhaps we should try reading it, not as history, but as the story of our individual lives, a sort of life script. In Genesis, I come into existence. I don't exactly understand my existence, but I am. And I am free. I create or become aware of duality, good and bad. Life happens to me, and I gradually lose freedom. In Exodus, my natural yearning to be free again leads me to overcome the inertia that's holding me captive. My captor appears to be an outside force, but it's really my habit energy. I have become accustomed to a particular lifestyle and am reluctant to give up what is for the possibility of what can be. My struggle for freedom is a process, two steps forward, then one back. It is my script, but my script includes others. I do not and cannot go alone. I create many aspects of self. I am Moses, the leader. I am Aaron, the priest. I am Miriam, the prophetess. I'm Joshua, the overcomer. God or source is with me on my journey and I'm safe. Some of my aspects of self are more aware of this connection than others. The duration of the journey to freedom is 40 something, which metaphysically means a long time. Any time spent in fear seems long. Biblically, it was 40 years. But for you, it could be 40 years, 40 days and 40 nights, 40 seconds, or even 40 milliseconds. The timing of our journey to freedom is up to us. Finally, I arrive in the land of milk and honey. I remain free as long as I have the courage to meet life daily. Exodus ends, but there are many more books and my life script continues. So if this is your life script or my life script, notice that each of us begins in freedom, journeys through fear, and back to freedom. The journey is a natural part of life. We can find hope and comfort in the idea that we're naturally journeying from fear to freedom. Remembering my life, I think there was an early time without fear. There was certainly a long period of many fears, struggles, and obstacles to overcome. But gradually, more and more freedom materialized. What has been your experience? Have you had a similar journey through life? If not, could it still be possible? Is freedom part of your destiny? It's let your mind wander time. Close your eyes and relax. I'll use the bell to call you back in a minute.
Freedom is a feeling. We feel it when we don't have freedom. We can also feel when we do things that move us toward freedom. We know we create our reality, that it's a mirror of what we believe, what's inside. But the outside world around us seems very real and seems to limit our freedom. If we want more freedom, we're free to change our inside world, the outside world, or both. And freedom has no limits. If you feel totally free, enjoy the feeling for as long as you like. Then you're free to explore some new freedoms. Maybe try to see through the world of illusion or try an out of body experience or just feel yourself expand because you are bigger than you think or travel to another dimension or you are free to fill in the blank. Freedom has no limits. Earlier I mentioned the Bible as possibly being a vortex for energy. My wife and I have found another book that works as a vortex for us. It's called The Way of Mastery and we're on our seventh reading It uses the word Christ, and I know some of you have trouble with that word. The meaning here is Christ is God's creation, and each of you are that. For Christ consciousness or Christ mind, we can substitute perhaps cosmic consciousness or cosmic mind. Don't get stuck on a word. I'm going to read an excerpt about freedom, and I encourage you to let the vortex work to experience the energy of the reading. Beloved and holy friends, we come forth in this lesson to yet again remind you that all that you think, all that you see, and all that you do is not the result of that which comes to you, but rather that which comes from you. For always and forever, the world you perceive is uncaused, save by yourself. This is why it is always true that freedom is closer to you than your own breath, that freedom is the reality of your being that freedom is that which is realized without effort. Freedom is realized when you decide to accept the truth that is true always. I and my father are one. I am that which I am. You are consciousness. You are awareness. You are that which witnesses, that which experiences, that which pays homage to the one thing God has created, Christ, which means the anointed. You have been anointed since before the beginning of all worlds with that which the Father is, awareness, pure intelligence. You have been anointed with the ability to choose what you would wish to perceive and thereby imbued with the power to create. You abide freely each moment. This freedom is completely unobstructed and unchangeable forever. It is in your freedom that you think what you think, you see what you see, you feel what you feel, even in your third dimensional reality. At any moment, you're perfectly free to see the radiant beauty of the real world pervading all things, 
even your own consciousness, just as you're also free to see fear. Thus ends the reading. As we close, the Bell Method from Science of Mind recommends that you ask yourself, what did I find most interesting, inspiring, and useful? Texans have a saying, Sam Houston made us free and Samuel Colt made us equal. I suggest that you can free yourself by letting go of fear, that freedom is your destiny and you are free to proceed to freedom at your own pace. And so it is, amen, thank you. Thank you, James. You've given us much to think about and it certainly was both interesting and inspiring and useful and I, I'm, I'm really grateful for the words that you shared with us. So beautifully. So now we'll take a few moments in meditation. So as we prepare for meditation, just feel yourself grounded to the ground below you, the floor below you, and feel your connection from your crown chakra, the top of your head, to the skies. Feel yourself centered within, in your heart consciousness. And inviting you just to focus on your breath and your breathing, the sensation of the in-breath, and sensation of the out breath. You may be aware, can become aware of your beat of your heart, any sounds around you, any sensations around you. And as we sink deeper into meditation, inviting the words of James, inviting letting your mind wander. So rather than some meditations where we observe thoughts or would prefer not to have thoughts, allowing the freedom of letting your mind wander in this let your mind wander time. And as we allow our mind to wander, we may choose to contemplate the questions James gave us as we contemplate freedom and his words, contemplating what is interesting, inspiring and useful. Contemplating the concept of freedom. What does that mean for us? And for each of us in this moment, what are our dreams of freedom? Our dreams of more freedom in our life. And then gently taking all of this, our interest, our inspiration, what's useful, our mind that's free to wander and concepts of freedom, taking that to, into our inner space, our inner sanctuary within us for a few moments in the silence.
And as we gently begin to come back from that place of silence, of communion with God, let's just gently come back to this place, this space. And inviting everyone to continue in this freedom of meditation, this freedom of letting our minds wander as we move into our special music piece. And this week, Unity of Las Cruces music director Barry Shaw is on the piano. And I would say soloist Max Contreras is singing. However, he's singing a three part. So we have three um, expressions of Max Contreras and the musical piece is America the Beautiful. Thank you, Barry, for that musical interpretation, and thank you, Max Contreras, for the beautiful singing, inspirational. We've come to the time in our service where we invite Kay Brilliant to share the prayer for faith and announcements. Welcome to Unity of Las Cruces, where we know that God is good all the time. Please join me in prayer as we affirm our prayer of faith. 
God is my help in every need. God does my every hunger feed. God dwells within me, guides my way through every moment, night and day. I now am wise, I now am true, patient, kind, and loving too. All things I am can do and be through Christ, the truth that is in me. God is my health, I can't be sick. God is my strength, unfailing quick. God is my all, I know no fear, since God and love and truth are here. Amen. We have a couple of announcements. Um, I want to remind you that while we are no, not physically with one another, we are always together under the light of God, that you can send your support, your checks, your gifts, your tithe to Unity of Las Cruces, P.O. Box 1143, that's Las Cruces, New Mexico, 88004. And um, tithing is a part of our spiritual discipline and our spiritual growth. So um, let's keep um, the abundance flowing. That's how it works. We give. That money goes to others with love. We give with love. We send it out in love. And, of course, then love comes right back to us. And also, in addition, I want to remind you that um, you can offer a prayer request in any number of ways um, through Unity, um, Silent Unity. You can call with a prayer request. You can send mail, as we do when we're together and we do the little uh, sheets of paper. We mail that directly to Silent Unity. Or you can submit an online prayer request uh, form. And all of that information is on your email, or you might remember, this is where all of that information is, and you can do that. Thank you, Kay. And now uh, we have Jan Hampton with our prosperity affirmation. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful. And we are grateful, thank you. Next we have a slide with our tithing recipient for this week. So our weekly tithe is going to Silent, Ut Un Silent Unity. And they continue to be available to us night and day and by many different methods that we can have our prayers answered. And it's joy with joyful intent and love that we tithe to silent unity. Next, we have Jane Ray with our affirmation for unity. The affirmation for unity. Guided by infinite love and wisdom, and with God as our source, we now behold unlimited possibilities as unity of Las Cruces grows and prospers. Thank you, Jane. And now Kay and Virginia Brilliant will bring us the prayer for protection. Please join us as we affirm the prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. Amen. Thank you, Kay. Thank you, Virginia. Our next slide is introducing our next week's speaker. So I will be speaking next week. It's, the title is The Spirituality of Freedom as we finish up the month of July with the theme of freedom. So I invite you all to join, join me for that. 
Our next slide is our continua continuation of the Daily Word, the Welcome the Word on Wednesdays. And the information is in the uh, weekly email from Unity with its um, joining code and password. So please, please feel free to join me on Wednesday mornings. We have a wonderful time. A reminder that next week is also the Hawaiian Shirt Day. And so we will be in the spirit of Hawaii with the Hawaiian shirts. So it should be a, a very fun Sunday for us to get together. A reminder that we may have to continue to stay at home, but we don't have to be, a, be alone. Uh, reach out to each other, reach out to us. You are loved and we will be together again soon. Thank you for attending this week's virtual Sunday service celebration. And uh, thank you especially again to for James Hampton for his talk today. And you're welcome to stay after the service for our conversation and say hi. And now we'll move into our uh, closing song, which is Let There Be Peace on Earth with Barry and Max Contreras. on earth and let it begin with me let there be peace on earth the peace that was meant to be with god as creator family all are we let us walk with each other each other in perfect harmony Be the moment now. Be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth, and let it be. Thank you for being here. Be well, be safe, be peace. Namaste. Thank you. <laughs>